Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all from First Baptist. I'd like to wish y'all a merry New Year. Uh, have a great New Year in our Lord. Uh, we're going to be talking this morning um, about the new man and the old man. I know y'all love to hear those things, but there is a new man if you're a child of God. Uh, there is an old man which you fought and uh, you still continue to fight until we get to glory. But the scripture text this morning we're going to be looking at is. Uh, in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 17. <clears throat> if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on these things above, not on things on earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. In God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye also appeareth with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is review, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all, these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we come uh, before you. Lord, one year has ended. Another one is beginning, Lord. We know you're uh, the author of that. Lord, we just pray today that each and every ear would be open. Uh, Lord, that uh, whatever is said and done here would bring glory and honor to your name. Uh, these things we would pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, my mom was at my house yesterday. And I got talking to her about lazy Christians. Well, what do you mean by that, Brother Mark? I know that battle running around in your head. Well, do you ever defend your faith? Do you, as a Christian, as a child of God, ever defend your faith? Or are you one of those people that can say, well, like Brother Donnie tells me all the time, y'all know I'm joking. I'm just going to live on this example. Lazy Christian. If you're not sharing your faith, you're not fulfilling the Word of God. Let me say that again. If you're not sharing your faith, you're not fulfilling the Word of God. What did he say when he left? Go ye therefore, teaching and preaching, unto all the nations. So, go ye therefore does not mean living uh, a good life, if that were possible, Brother Don. It is not. But what caught my hair on fire, and I'm saying all this to say this, what caught my hair on fire was a post... And I did catch fire, believe me. I was over here preaching at Donnie before, before Christmas. It was a post I saw on the internet, and you guys out there, I'm telling you, 
Y'all First Baptist people that watch us every every week, you need to be defending your defending your faith. Uh, you know, there's people dying and going to hell because we're being silent. You want me to repeat that too? There's people that is dying and going to hell because we're silent today. We are lazy Christians. Shame on us. But what kind of a hair on fire? Some person, I don't really know who it was. I I tried to research, but, you know, God in His providence decided not to let me find that person because I might have sinned when I was talking to Him. So, uh, but some person said that there was no such thing as a sinner's prayer. He said that Billy Graham was a fraud and that there was no such thing as a sinner's prayer. Well, the person that said that clearly has never, ever read his Bible. But I got to thinking on, and I read some of the comments uh, that day because my hair was on fire. I couldn't stop. Uh, and, you know, there was not anyone giving any scripture reference for Christ. No one, no one took a stand for Jesus Christ. Well, he was talking about Billy Graham, brother. Okay. But what else did he say? He said there was no sinner's prayer. Well, that's not true. That's just not true. It's not word for word what some of the tracts say. But I assure you, I don't get up here every Sunday at least and preach some fairy tale. This is not, this is not once upon a time. This is the inerrant and fired once by the word of God. Y'all are in for it today, I assure you. But I promise you, I don't get up here teaching fairy tales every day. It is life and death. Y'all got to get serious. I don't care about your lifestyle. God doesn't call you to be a double life Christian, does he, Victoria? No. No. You're supposed to be sharing your faith. We're supposed to be defending the faith. You're an ambassador to Jesus Christ. You should be able to defend it. You should be more than able to defend it. If you don't, you're not spending enough time in the Word of God. You're weak. Let's talk a little bit about Scripture, though, this morning. I want to use a reference uh, before we get into this too deeply. Um, it's uh, the same book, Colossians, the second chapter, eighth verse. Uh, Beware lest any man spoil you, ruin you, right? Spoil you through philosophy and vain to see. What is philosophy? Study of nature. Causes and principles of reality. I'm going to give you all a definition. Knowledge of based on logical reasoning. What's the second part of that? Vain deceit. Lies. Uh, a man will lie to you. You know, you tell me something about the Bible, I want you to be able to prove it when you talk to me. You guys witnessing to people and say... And telling them about Jesus need to be able to prove it in the Scripture. To prove it in the Bible. Uh, how are you going to go ye therefore if you don't know what you're talking about? Or if you're just living, what's that? Living by example. I'm going to tell you something. If I go to the place where you're employed, or if I go talk to your neighbor if you're not employed, they should know that you're a Christian. If they don't know you're a Christian, there's a problem. There's a problem with your walk. There is a problem with your spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, we don't have room for double lot Christians. They need to be out in the world sharing the gospel. Time is short. If you think today is not as evil as in the times of Noah... Right before the return of Christ, you're confused. You all straighten me out today. Send me a text message. Uh, uh, First Baptist Internet. Send me a text if you don't think it's as evil today as it was in the times of Noah. Listen, it's going to be just that way before he returns. But I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to get on with it here. We're going to have to. I'll be out of time before I know. <clears throat> So this rudiments of the world is what the world teaches. And we have got to be careful about the philosophy of men. If I can't back up what I'm saying to you with the Scripture, you know what? It's what I think. It's not what the Bible says. Again, I don't care who the preacher is. And I'm not up here to bash the men of God. I wouldn't do that. 
But I'm telling you, if, you, if he cannot back it up with hard facts in the Word of God, then it's what he thinks. Okay? Okay, we're called to follow Jesus, and he is in this book. So be careful about following men. Uh, you know, I'm not telling you don't take care of your pastor. That's not what I'm saying. If that's what you got out of that, you're wrong. If you take care of the man of God, he's uh, looking out for your souls. And I can back that up the Scripture. <clears throat> but the world says what? What does the world say? Let me get on with the Scripture here in the, uh, in the message. Uh, it doesn't matter who you believe as long as you believe in someone. That's what the world says. That's what philosophy says. That's what some of these vain deceivers around you say, right? It doesn't matter who you believe in. Well, what does Scripture say? Let me quote it to you because I'm really in that kind of frame of mind today. I should be in that frame of mind every day, apparently. <clears throat> John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6, write it down. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so what am I saying to you here? I'm saying to you, that Buddha won't get it done. I'm saying that Mohammed can't get it done. I'm saying no preacher boy you know can get it done. I'm saying Jesus and Jesus alone. So would you say we would put that to bed? I would say that. Uh, those words are written in red in my copy of the Word of God. If they're not written in red in yours, please get a new one. philosophy of the world, if you've read your internet today, you hear all about all of these uh, scriptures that have been left out of, out of the Holy Bible. Well, they were left out, if there are any, because they couldn't have been proved. Uh, these men that wrote this King James Bible, you all can hate me if you want to, the people that wrote that were under a threat of death. In other words, if I tell you, if you can't prove this, if you can't prove this, and I find a mistake, I'm going to take your life. So the world says that we've left things out. Well, we may have left things out, but they were not provable. They, were, they could not be proven. <clears throat> what does the Bible say? Matthew, verse 5. Oh, excuse Fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 18. Let me read this to you here. For verily I say unto you, fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, Jesus talking here, Christian, if you are one, you should pay attention. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till it be fulfilled. The world says we've left things out. Jesus says not one jot, not one tittle until this world passes away. Believe me, what the world says is not where you need to be. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm, I wrote notes. <laughs> I'm telling you, I wrote notes. I come prepared today, y'all, believe it or not. Oh, uh, the world says, the world philosophy says, I know you people, some of y'all love philosophy, you love playing little mind games. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, the world says, when I die, there's nothing. <clears throat> Let's talk just a minute here. I've got to look this up. The world says, "When I when I die, there's nothing." Hebrews nine twenty seven says, "And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment." Hmm. Let's go a little farther. Luke sixteen. Twenty-three through tw or twenty-two and twenty-two through twenty-three. It came to pass that the beggar died, 
and was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. Jesus speaking again, Luke, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his, bo- in his bosom. The world says, when I die, there is nothing. The Bible says, God, Jesus says right here, that they both go somewhere when they die. There's two destinations when you take your last breath, folks. Two, and only two. One in heaven and one in hell. There's only two places you can go. I didn't come here to preach a, preach a, a salvation message, but apparently that's the way I'm going. But Jesus says he lift up his eyes in that place called hell. <clears throat> the world said, well, if you're lost, no one can save you. No prayer can save you. <clears throat> The Bible says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But the world says, no one can save you. I tell you, I want you to just love it. Let's, let's read just a minute here in, in, uh, in the 10th chapter of, of uh, Romans. And I... I want you all to get this. These folks on the internet need to get a grip. Um, Tenth chapter, verse 9. If thou confess, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There is no sinner's prayer, mother. Hmm, imagine that. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And don't you love verse 13? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the world says, no one can save you. My Jesus can save you. Amen. Okay, he's the one that can. I can't do it. I'm just as simple as the next guy. I'm, I'm telling you. The only person that can save your soul is Christ. If you're sitting here today, if you're in the sound of my voice, and you've ended the year, uh, and you've ended the year a lost person, you're not promised tomorrow. Now's the appointed time. Again, for God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. You know, He gave Jesus for your salvation, for your for your salvation. I guess we'd better get back to the Scripture if I'm ever going to get to it today. Uh, I've had you all on a sidetrack, but I want to talk a little bit about the old man uh, versus the new man. The old man says, where am I here? Excuse me. Verse 1, if ye be risen with Christ above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, your life is hid with Christ. When Christ, who is your life, uh, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You know, there's a couple things. If you be risen with Christ, okay, who's he talking to? It's not conditional here. Who's he speaking with? He's speaking with believers. He's speaking with the Colossian believers. <clears throat> says, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. How many people do you all know? The only thing they focus on is how much money I can make. Who is their God? If they love money, who is their God? And that's the sin. It's not to have money is a sin. It's the love of money, right? Remember, remember scripture again. Uh, it's the love of money. But if money is the only thing you think about every day, you walk around, you're not spending time with the Lord, your your Savior. Then we've got a problem because you got an idol, and it's money. If it's a house, then so be it. If it's an automobile, then so be it. 
Oh, that's your idol. If it's a person, that's your idol. Anything or anyone takes place of God is the definition of an idol. Anyone or anything. It tells us here in Scripture to set your affections on things above, not on this earth. Not on anything of this earth. If you're dead uh, and your life is here with Christ, when Christ is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with Him in glory. Let me tell you right there, if that's not a promise of where you'll be after you die, I don't know what one is. Uh, you will be seen in heaven uh, in glory with Him. If you're a Christian, if you're not, then you've got to go to the other place. Mortify there your members. Kill them. Uh, mortify them. Kill them. Uh, which are upon the earth. For uh, we're not to be involved in fornication. You're not to be having extramarital affairs. Uh, adultery is adultery. Uh, you're not to be uh, practicing un- unclean- uncleanliness. <laughs> I'll spit it out. But I'm not talking about the shower that you had this morning, Brother Donnie. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in your speech, Christian. Oh, yeah. There we go. There he goes again. You're right. There I go again. Uh, when you're at work telling these stupid jokes, are they bringing glory and honor to God? Is your language, brother and sister, bringing glory and honor to the person that saved your soul? If you're as filthy and foul mouthed as the rest of the world, where is the difference? <clears throat> Covenants, which is idolatry. Again, if you're, if anything or anyone, again, the, the, the definition applies. If anything or anyone is taking the place of God, Okay, you have an idol. You're coveting that money, uh, I don't know, your spouse, whatever you're doing. Uh, but whatever sin you're in, let me put it that way, uh, it's, it's not glorifying and honoring God. Okay, it's an idol. Get rid of it. I don't care what it is. Get rid of it. Throw it away. Scripture's telling us clear to get rid of it. Uh, you want a New Year's resolution? I'll clean your life up here. Amen. It says, the Bible says, mortify it. Kill it. Uh, for which things sake the wrath of God come with the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. In other words, he's saying, don't be like the old Mark. Right? Don't be the old. Y'all wouldn't like the old Mark. He was a mess. I'm not sure many of you like the new Mark. But anyway, the old Mark was a wreck. He was spending his time doing what? Exactly what Mark wanted to do. What did you spend your time doing? Uh, when you were not a child of God. You spent time uh, uh, indulging self, right? Whatever self wanted, that's what self did. Okay? The Scripture is telling us clearly here to, to uh, distance ourselves from the old man, right? And take in the new man. Lie, lie not. <coughs> Excuse me. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man which, with his deeds. You're not supposed to lie to another. You're not supposed to lie to anyone. You're definitely not supposed to lie to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, the Bible says you are never more like the devil than when we lie. Didn't say if, huh? Anywhere the old man uh, attacks us at all times. We've got to, we've got to put him off. <clears throat> Here in verse 10 it tells us, And we have to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, of the image of him that created him. How are you renewed? Come on, y'all. How are y'all renewed in knowledge? Well, by studying the Word of God. Hopefully, by hearing the preaching that you hear on Sunday morning. If you're not getting fed, you need to find a new place to eat. If you're not getting fed. <clears throat> so, uh, knowledge renews the mind. What knowledge? Worldly knowledge? We've disproved that today really badly, huh? Uh, it's nothing more than a uh, pack of wild dogs telling packs of wild lies. They're not believable. They're not truthful. Uh, They're not honest folks. Um, So, uh, uh, we're to be renewed in our knowledge by what? By studying the Word of God. Every day, y'all ought to be in the Word of God. If you're not, 
You kind of like a bodybuilder, Donnie. If we're eating or reading the Word of God every day, you're growing stronger in the admonition of the Lord, and you're growing stronger in your faith. Okay? When you stop doing that, when you stop reading the Word of God every day, what happens? You get weaker and weaker, and soon the old man, the battle's still there. The old man is battling with the new man, and the old man is getting stronger. The worldly old man is getting stronger, or woman, and then you get weaker and you fall into sin. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 11. You know, we need to put to bed all these differences, uh, whether they be racial or, or whatever kind of differences are going on in the house of the Lord. Uh, and here in verse 11, it's going to tell us just exactly that, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, free, but Christ is all and in all. You know, if you're doing that kind of thing and you're in a church body, shame on you. Uh, if you're practicing, practicing some kind of uh, racial uh, degradation uh, in the house of God, shame on you. He's going to judge you for that. Stop it. The Bible tells us to put that stuff off. There is no difference. There's two types, types of people in the world today. Get this. There's the saved and the lost. Just two. There's the elect and the lost. Just two people. <clears throat> Twelve. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Let's stop right here for just a second. I want to talk about this elect stuff. It is very confusing. Uh, it causes many, many people to stumble. Poor Brother Donnie stumbled over the bunch. Y'all know I'm joking. He don't stumble. Um, i got to ask you something. Are you a child of God today? If you are, guess who you are? You are the elect. If you've made a decision for Jesus Christ, if you've asked Him to forgive your sins, if you've asked Him to be the Lord of your life, guess who you are? You're the elect. Let's put it to bed today, folks. Uh, you know, these differences that we have, uh, I'm telling you, it's hard to cause Christ. Y'all can continue to play the head games if you want. Be in philosophy all day long if that's what you're desiring to be. But I promise you, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and He's going to say, what were you doing in my name? Christ is all and in all. Uh, get it through your head. Uh, you know, we're not to be uh, judging people on anything. Uh, judge not lest you be judged. We're to be doing what we're, what we're called to do. And what was that? What was the beginning of the message? Go ye therefore unto all the world, teaching and preaching. <clears throat> so what is the new man supposed to look like? Took me a long time to get to here. Isn't it? Took a long time to get here. Put on therefore as the elect, all right, holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. What does long suffering mean? Y'all grew up around wood. You know, uh, some wood burns longer than others. Some wood burns hotter than others. Uh, you know, an old piece of oak will lay down, lay there, and smolder around and and burn the burn in the fire all night, won't it? Uh, that's what long suffering is. We're to be long suffering. We're to be forbearing one to another. We're to be forgiving one another. Now, does that mean that I'm supposed to be some kind of a doormat? No. That's not what that means. But I'm to forgive as Christ has forgiven me. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you're to forgive someone today and they do the same thing tomorrow and uh, the same thing the day after that. Although that's being a doormat. We're not to be that. But you are to forgive that person if a couple things happen. He comes to you and he says, I, I'm sorry for what I did. I, I'm wrong. I, then you're to forgive him. Okay? Christian, you're to forgive him. Uh, how many times have you been wrong in the face of God? A lot. We're to have meekness. Humbleness. And meekness does not mean Weakness. Uh, there's a difference in meekness and weakness. Uh, our Lord was meek, but after the beating he took, do you think for one second he was weak? 
after the sins of the world was poured out upon him on the cross, nails through his hands and his feet, was he weak? But he was meek. We're to be meek. We're to be long suffering. We're to forgive. The new man is to forgive. And if you have a quarrel with anyone, go settle it. Go say, Brother, how have I offended you? Let me fix this. I'm losing my voice today. Good for you all. <clears throat> Above all these things, put on charity. What is charity? Charity is love. Above all these things, put on love. You know, don't just say, Brother Mark, I love you when you're at church on Sunday morning. You need to love me every day. Uh, don't say I'm just going to love you when, the, uh, when things are great. You need to love me when times are bad. Uh, when I'm in the house of mourning, uh, you need to show up. I don't need wisdom. I need you to put your hands on, your, on my shoulder and say, hey, Brother, I'm here for you if you need me. Be careful. Uh, you're to love one another. You know, you want some resolutions for this year. I don't care how much you want to lose. I don't care how much weight you want to lose. Put on the new man. Put on the meekness. Put on the kindness. Put on the charity. Put on the love that you need to extend to your fellow, fellow Christian. Put on the love. Put on the love to this lost and dying world around about us. Again, every minute we waste. I know I'm running out of time. Every minute we waste. Someone is dying and departing to that place called hell. You know, Jesus wouldn't have spoke about it if it wasn't a destination. He wouldn't. He couldn't lie. It's one of the things that He cannot do. It's against His divine character. He cannot tell a lie. <clears throat> and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, uh, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We're to be a thankful people. Uh, we're to be thankful that the Lord let us get up and get to the church house this morning. There's many people, many people that couldn't come. They're locked in a nursing home somewhere that, that don't get to hear the Word of God unless it's on the television. That don't have someone to tell them, uh, hey, be meek, be kind, practice love. They don't have those people. We need to be thankful for those things. Let the Word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. Listen, this is a brand new year. I know Christ can forgive anything you did last year. I know it. I know He's had to forgive a lot for me. He can forgive whatever's happened last year. It doesn't matter. It's in the past. All you have to do is say, God, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against my fellow man. I've sinned. Please forgive me. It's just that simple. You don't have to carry it. We don't have to carry it into the new year. Let's do that. Let's pray for forgiveness for what we've done last year. The wrong things. If we have any of these things here uh, in our life, the anger, the wrath, the malice, the filthy communication, believer, act like you're a child of God. Amen. Don't be it. Don't be. Don't be a. Don't be a the workplace or out in the street telling filthy jokes. What is up with that? You know, I work with Christians, pro proclaimed Christians that have the filthiest mouth. I've ever heard. What? They only clean their language up, mother, when they're in church? I understand. Filthy communication. It's in the Bible. I suggest you deal with it. Don't lie to one another. Put on the new man. You don't have to lie. You have a Savior that's sitting at the right hand of God this morning making intercession for you. You do not have to lie. You don't trust Him enough to see you through this new battle? You better believe He'll see you through it. Even in spite of yourself sometimes, right? Amen. <clears throat> Let the Word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom. Well, how do you get the Word of God? You get it in your Bible. We need to be reading and studying the Word of God daily. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, 
do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Listen, whatever you do, wherever you are, whatever station you have in life, we're to do it as unto the Lord. We're to do it like when He was standing right there, because guess what He is? He was standing right there and He was saying, Mark, go fix that truck. Brother Donald, turn that internet on. Vicky, where is that dog? Whatever your station is in life, whatever you do, we're to be doing it as unto the Lord. So, you know, I know you do your job. If you weren't successful, you probably would get fired, right? I know you do your job, but are you doing it as unto the Lord? Are you bringing Him glory and honor while you're doing it? Or are you hating every second of it? We're to be doing it as unto the Lord. We're to put on the new man. We're to be telling our fellow workers. We're to be telling our neighbors. We're to be telling the cashier at the local supermarket about Jesus Christ. Listen, again, we don't need any secret service Christians. We need Christians that are going to go out into the world and tell them about Jesus and be obedient to the Word of God. Y'all, put off the old man. You're not that person. You've died with Jesus, and you've been risen into new life through baptism. Don't be the old man. Put away those things that made you the sinner you were. And for God's sake, this has not been a salvation message, but if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, Admit to Him that you're a sinner. And you come short of the glory of God. Don't go to hell. You don't have to go. Just admit that you've sinned and come short of the glory of God. And agree with Him that He raised Christ on the third day. And trust Him to be the Lord of your life. That's it. I'm not asking you to clean up anything. He'll do that. Amen. You don't have to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect until we get to see Him anyway. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to be forgiven. Y'all stand with me and have a great New Year. Uh, please, please, be good ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've been together. Lord, we thank you for this year that you saw us through. And Lord, we know sometimes, all the time, you're the only one that can see us through this time. Lord, we pray for the upcoming battles. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us. We pray that you would make us good ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you would see everyone home safely. Back here at the next appointed hour. These things we pray in the name of Jesus.